Thank you very much all for joining us. Um, I think it's probably best to start generally, because we've, we've heard a lot of talk both about retail attainment and about the uniqueness of cruise. So for each of you individually, what are the key differences for the cruise market when it comes to offering retail attainment for shoppers? And Lottie, I'll start yeah, with you. Yeah, of course. Well, first of all, big thanks uh, to make me part of this uh, of this panel and also uh, yeah, to, to be able to experience rituals. Um, well, um, for rituals, cruise business, is a very important part of the business um, because it's driving the sales and the, and, and the growth of the business. But I also heard today and yesterday, it's also building the global brand. Um, so it's creating a lot of brand awareness for us. And where passengers on board are seeking for leisure as well, relaxation, this is where we really match with the brand because Rituals is all about creating memories and uh, experience on board. Uh, because we have our collections that help you to relax, but also we've got our collections that help you to energize. Um, and I think this is also where we really see cruises as a good opportunity to engage with the customers. Um, and actually you see on the screen some fantastic uh, things that we did together in partnership with Harding, uh, where we uh, really had the 360 approach on board of the cruise uh, with our relaunch of our newest collection, Sakura. Um, where we created relaxing uh, spaces where the passengers could relax and slow down. Um, entertainment in stores, so we trained the staff of creating that engagement with the customers by doing hand massages with our products, but also doing one minute of meditation. And I think what really concludes the 360 approach is that we were able to present our um, meditation sessions and yoga sessions on board of the cabins. Uh, so on the television screen, uh, on board of the cabins, you, uh, you could do your own yoga and meditation uh, classes uh, in the cabin. And I think this, yeah, it gives you the opportunity as a brand really to showcase and, and create that retailtainment, how we call it. Thank you. And, and Amy, from your point of view and from, from a spirit's point of view, what are the key differences for retail tainment in cruise? Right. So people are on the in vacation mode when they yeah. come on board. And so it gives them an opportunity to immerse themselves in product the way that they wouldn't do in any other channel. And so what we see are seminars and uh, brand experiences and unveilings, mm -hmm. uh, treasure hunts that culminate in a prize or a discount at the end. The consumer has the time and they have the mindset uh, to explore. Mm -hmm. And so this gives the brands a, a wonderful opportunity to really showcase and uh, perform that storytelling in a unique, unique way. And uh, of course, learning about the, the travel or exclusive products that make uh, cruising and the customers purchase and take home a product and a memory of their voyage is so important. Brilliant, thank you. And, and Suzanne, from a, obviously from a cruise line and retailer point of view, um, what, what sets this market apart when it comes to what you can offer in retail attainment? Yeah, I mean, I think it's exactly as Amy said, the, the huge difference from any other channel in travel retail is that the cruise ship is the destination. People are there to be on holiday, so we are not only the, there for the shopping, but there it's the hotel, it's the entertainment, it's the spa, it's everything, and it's all about that being in a relaxed holiday retail mindset. And once again, as Amy said, we've got the time, so we've really got the time to engage and and entertain, and people want to be entertained, uh, which is not necessarily the difference when you're travelling through an airport or on an airline. Yeah. We're not a transactional business. This is this is an experience business. So uh, we have to be very mindful of that um, in the way that we deliver the product and in the way that we deal with the guest, really, yeah. making the best experience and, and make everything entertaining, really, because cruise is an entertaining business. Yes. I, and Matteo, for you guys, from a, from a sunglasses point of view, what, what sets your cruise offer apart from retail attainment as opposed to yeah. the other businesses? First of all, thank you very much for having us on stage. This is a event. Uh, congratulations to all of you for uh, managing and organizing the set so well. Um, as you know, Asilo Luxotic has been engaged in design, production, distribution of a major ladies sunglasses brand. But talking as an industry of sunglasses when it comes to cruise, the different, different uh, synergy with the airport and downtown business as well, uh, uh, many differences around. First one, it's time. Yeah. In airport, we experience uh, uh, conversion within uh, less than 20 minutes. On cruise, uh, we have seven days on average uh, with a peak in the last days. So that's the main one. Second one is space. 
in the airport we don't have that much space, but the FTO crew is, uh, space is more narrow and limited. So we need to take in consideration uh, when it comes to rate attainment uh, that it's uh, uh, occupying space on board. Tier one is demographic. It's very different compared to airport, uh, but uh, when you narrow down uh, based on itineraries, cruise line, uh, you can uh, more be more specific to target consumer. As well, uh, let me say some environmental factor because uh, you're floating on the sea. So when you do installation activities, uh, you even have to think about uh, how you progress uh, with the activity to engage consumer from a sunglass perspective. And we, we were all talking just before we came on stage, looking at the sort of the, the importance of working together and what you can create. So before we dive in, kind of just come coming back along the line, looking at some of the best examples that you are aware of that you think are worth spotlighting um, from from a retail attainment point of view. And Matteo, I'll start with you, and I believe you've got a video. To get yeah, there. for us as a, a leading sunglasses brand, we have more than 100 brands in our portfolio. The key elements are mainly around two words. One is uh, innovation. We always try to be in the leading edge of innovation. The other side is uh, play to brands uh, and play even more. Uh, we've been uh, getting a short video to show you what we deliver on the market uh, a couple of years ago. We're now in the second and third generation of the product uh, that is Smart Glasses uh, done in partnership with, uh, with Mita. So we're going to show you some feature uh, on a very quick video, and then we're going to talk about uh, some uh, initiative to be running out uh, with MSC and others. You can run the video, please. <laughs> Yeah, this is basically a very cut of the video of uh, the smart glasses we deliver on the market and the retail attainment uh, we performed last year with MSC, like a trunk show to follow the crew on board uh, to understand uh, where the passengers are and uh, to let them play with the product uh, and even conversion was uh, very, very high. Uh, we've been playing on cruise with other uh, leading brands as, as a link to the sport many activities on board, so we're playing a lot with Oakley. We did like takeover of uh, massive uh, football, uh, sorry, uh, basketball court branded with Oakley, let them try Oakley once they play. We link it uh, to bike tour once again with MSC last year, and uh, even conversion was eager because they were trying product. Uh, as well in airport, we have many other examples. Uh, we can quote, for example, the partnership we have with Ferrari, so we're creating massive queue inside of the airport when we play simulator where people can play with Ferrari simulator year one. We play uh, a lot even with the licensed brand and luxury side uh, through VR and uh, augmented reality, both linking uh, to event and brand. We did some experience with Wimbledon last year through Polar and Florin, as well Prada was part of the game with different, uh, um, with different activity in airport, but definitely we would love to do more, uh, even in cruise uh, playing brands. Yeah, and and Suzanne, from from your point of view with MSC, what have been some of the the retailment ex opportunities that you've seen sort of work best within within your offer? Yeah, obviously at Harding as well, we saw some amazing activations that, uh, with Rituals and, and, and other brands. But um, yeah, I think the, the amazing activation that I've seen uh, on MSC, I'm obviously very new at MSC, is the uh, Lego activation. So I think where we can pull different uh, functions from around the ship, which we'll, I think we'll touch on a bit later, but we work with the kids' entertainment teams as well, and we make sure that we've got Lego figures walking around and we can get the... Uh, kids entertainer to come down with the Lego figures, take them into the Lego shop, which is where we've also got some beautiful bespoke MSC Lego uh, figures, which have some of our best sellers. But we can really create that excitement with the kids, but not just with kids, but with teens and, and adults as well. So I think if we can um, really incorporate and work with the other teams around the ship as well, yeah. that gives a great opportunity to create an overall entertaining uh, package, really. And Amy, is that something that you see with the best sort of retail attainment opportunities in your market and sector as well? 
Yeah, so there, there's obviously so many different ways to be creative and, and present product on board. And I would say the most effective in terms of sales volume can be anything personalized. I've worked across all categories for travel retail and anything that can be customized or personalized, we saw the data yesterday on that, uh, we will see between 100 to 300 times sales volume. Wow. And so it's tremendous um, in terms of driving, but uh, it, a great example was mentioned earlier by Alex at NCL with uh, Emma Walker coming on board and unveiling the travel exclusive uh, Johnny Walker Exordinaire. Uh, but in addition to that, it's not just having the, uh, the unique concept. It's also a big part, especially when you're looking for fleet-wide initiatives in, in retail, is repeatability. It has to be something that uh, can be executed by the staff, cruise in and cruise out to see real success long term. Yeah. Having those pop-ups, having those activations, that customized element is, is key to the channel. But long-term repeatability is key. And, and Lottie, for you, you talked a bit about the fact that you could sort of do things in the room and, and stuff like that. How, what have been your big retailtainment successes in Cruise? Yeah, well, for us, retailtainment is, is part of, of our company. I mean, we really like to engage with our customers. So if you enter, for example, a travel retail store in an airport, um, you get a cup of tea offered um, while you're browsing around to really slow down from that stressful journey. Um, you also will be able to test the products at the Water Island, and that's something that I find really interesting also to see how can we bring that through the uh, cruise market, because... Often it's products on shelf, but what can we really do to create that engagement and, and, and also to bring that storytelling across? And I think that's where the training part, and I really liked uh, the presentation of Adrian yesterday, is training is key. So I think we play as a, as a brand an important role to yeah, bring the storytelling about rituals. But in general, I think that's something that we should really focus on. Yeah, I, there's been a bit of a, a common theme there that no brand or cruise retailer can do this alone, can they? It's something that has to be done in collaboration. And in, in your experience, how important is that collaboration to making the most of the opportunity in retail entertainment? Um, yeah, it's it's key. I mean, uh, collaboration internally as well externally. I mean, if you work together on something, you can achieve the goal. Um, and we need all parties to do so. So I think uh, would definitely it's a retailer, it's a cruise liner to be really um, clear on the expectations and what we can do together, what we can bring as a brand on retailtainment. And um, I think well, the example that I just shared with with about the Harding ships, I think this shows there is a lot of things possible. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I see it. So yeah. collaboration is key. I, Amy, I know this is something you feel very passionately about. Oh, absolutely. So in, in addition to the collaboration, I would say that getting ahead of trends and having that data piece of it is so important. Yeah. Uh, activations, when it comes to the three main players, the retailer, the brand, the cruise line, everyone views activation through a different lens. Yeah. And so having all three parties together to collaborate and pivot and provide uh, feedback meaningfully can shave weeks, sometimes months off lead time. Yeah. of activations and so uh, having all three players together communicating and uh, in, in staying um, collaborative is key. Yeah, the tra travel retail does love a trinity um, to be working together. Obviously, Suzanne, you guys have a unique situation at MSC because you are two parts of that. Yeah. How, how does that sort of collaborative business work? Yeah, I think it's it's a it's a huge opportunity. I think, and I and I know different cruise lines work really closely with concessionaires, but I think being at the table when key decisions are being made, also just being able to hear what's going on around you and and, and piping up and say, don't forget, you know, don't forget about retail or how can we work with you whether that's the new Broadway show that's coming, can we help out with the with the licensing there or can we help in the spa and do some activations there, kids clubs, photo, whatever it is. If you're at the table, as you said, things happen much quicker if you can be part of the process from the beginning rather than piping up at the end when something's fait accompli. So, yeah, it definitely makes a difference being part of it, but I totally agree. It's still it's not as easy as it would seem because, obviously, retail is still a small part of a bigger picture. So food and beverage and hotel, as you know, as some of our cruise line partners know, that's still kind of the main voice at the table. Yeah. So um, it's not all plain sailing to use a terrible uh, sailing pun. <laughs> um, but yes, it, it's, it makes life a lot easier. Yeah. 
And Mateo, what, what have you seen collaboration unlock for you guys? And are there aspects of working with cruise lines that gives you an opportunity to do more um, within the cruise sector, do you think? Definitely, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, collaboration is key uh, for us above all because we work uh, in a fashion industry. And when it comes to fashion, you have uh, at least two main stories around the year, and every time they change. So we should link the brand stories jointly with the demographic on board, as well uh, linking to the itinerary because uh, when it comes to exclusive product uh, or more personalized service, uh, when it comes to entertain the, the people that are on board, uh, it's key to understand and address uh, all the points and uh, connecting all the dots uh, that you have it on the table. So much closer we are uh, as a brand uh, to uh, every cruise line, every retailer on board, uh, more opportunity we can get uh, and we can gain for uh, all of us and entertain the customer at the very end. What do, you, what do you think are the key opportunities that are in the market to develop retailtainment further, to take it to that next level? Um, Amy, come to you first. What's, what are the opportunities that are there and possibly the barriers that need to be overcome from your point of view as Diageo to, to, to make the most of that? <clears throat> Well, I mentioned before, uh, the data piece is is very crucial. So uh, I think a barrier, no surprise to anybody here, is, is connectivity on board. Uh, brands have very, very well thought out, fleshed out uh, brand toolkits for activation. And I would say that this is assumptive, that someone has their mobile device active and, and ready to uh, participate in this retailtainment. And so digital is such a big part of that because it feeds very well into that personalization element that we spoke to before. So when you have uh, a space on board that doesn't have that digital capability or that connectivity, then what you then see is uh, a challenge when it comes to receiving that data, measuring ROI, and that can be a barrier for unlocking future investment. And how do you think that's overcome? What's, what are going to be the keys to helping you overcome that problem? Sure. Uh, keeping the conversation open and, and partnerships are key. Um, ensuring that uh, the brands, the retailers, and the cruise lines are all innovating. Yeah. And I, I would say that that's very top of mind in every, with everybody in this room. We all want to be innovative. We want to bring first to market. Cruise is a channel that, that we're super interested in investing in. Uh, so we have to find those solutions that allows for the, the data piece. Uh, and an example of, uh, from Diageo is what's your whiskey? And this is a category solution to customization and, and bringing new consumers to the market. Uh, however, without the constant connectivity of data sharing, we are not able to provide full recommendations yeah. on the product. And so that, that end consumer does not experience a seamless uh, interaction the way they would in another channel. Yeah. So the issue of sharing data, obviously, from stake, the different stakeholders is one we see across travel retail. And Suzanne, from a cruise point of view, what, what do you th how do you think retail retailtainment can be developed? And, and what do you think is needed to sort of take that relationship to the next level? Yeah, I mean, I don't understand why we don't share data because I don't think you can have proper partnership if you're not sharing the data. Yeah. Um, and that goes both ways. You know, we, we, um, we know a lot about our guests and I think that's another great thing about being, uh, having the retail in, internal is that we can, we know the data and we have the data about the demographic in advance. But why we aren't sharing this is, is a bit of a mystery because how can we get the best out of our brand partners if they don't have the right information and equally, we need to leverage the brand partners, what they know about the market and their demographic, because they have far more expertise in that field than we will ever have. Yeah. So absolutely sharing that data is absolutely key, but probably as Mark Burney was saying this morning, you can't necessarily change the hardware and you can't change the fabric of a, of a ship very easily. You have to do that in service. So how do we get the digital assets into that ship space, into the shop space now is a bit of a challenge, but I think it can be done. But I think technology is the key to being able to speak to multiple um, nationalities, speaking multiple languages, and making it a really flexible and destination specific. If it's, if, it's, if it's digital, it's much easier to change and you don't then have the problem with the space. So I think that's where we need to, to head to, is to having really excellent technology in our shops. And, and adding on to that, it also speaks so much to customization on content, yeah. because you were referencing Lego before. I'm talking about Johnny Walker, we're talking about Rituals, we're talking about Ray-Ban, so it's, there's so many 
many different messages out there and the retail message currently as it sits is very one dimensional. And so that digital element will unlock so much customization in terms of content and how the brands can show up in a more meaningful way. And Matteo, you, we saw a moment ago your sort of the new products you've got, and digital is a key part of this and that experience. How do you sort of bring that to life? How can you take that to the next level with your cruise partners, do you think? I mean, as a company perspective, uh, we are integrating EI inside of uh, the smart glasses as well. Uh, we develop many, many tools that going into digital direction. We feel that uh, in airport business downtown, uh, we have more uh, progress compared to cruise, so just at the beginning of the journey in cruise. This is bringing me to a point that the one part is a, a challenge and the other one is an opportunity. Uh, where we think there are uh, spaces is both sides, more traditional one uh, through pop-up area to showcase brand and to engage consumer in the right way. On the other side, the more uh, digital element, uh, augmented reality, for example, it's very limited space, but you can play a lot inside that. Knowing that uh, uh, there are uh, some element on the ground that should be circled all together, and from a brand perspective, uh, we should start thinking to integrate much more our, co uh, mar our marketing campaign inside of the cruise line. I think that uh, from that point, uh, we should we can do more and we will do more uh, in the future. From uh, both cruise and retailer perspective, uh, uh, obviously connection is key, space is key, uh, logistic is key, mm -hmm. as well uh, from uh, retailer, the curated assortment around uh, the selection that has been uh, even supported by us. We're working with more than uh, thousand and thousand of SKU, so to pick up and choose the right one to link it to the entertainment activity accordingly to the demographic is not an easy job, no. but it's on the retailer perspective and the responsibility to tackle this thanks to our support, as well ensuring that all the operations are smoother on board. And Lottie, from your point of view, sort of We've talked, and Matteo's touched there, on the importance of having an experience that you can sort of live and see, and that is a core part of what you do with rituals. How do you think you can develop that further, and what, what do you think you need to be able to take those experiences to the next level? Yeah, well, I think our big competition on board of a cruise ship is all the entertainment out there. Um, so how do we make retail really part of the journey of the customers on board? And I think we should think more out of the box of so what kind of initiatives can we do to create that traffic towards the store. Obviously, I completely agree with everything that they have already said, like digitalization, but also personalization. But I think if you think broader as well, is, is how creating the, the moments in, in the cabins. I mean, that's the, the point that they have the time to slow down and to relax. Well, we see there an opportunity to do some interaction with the customers in, in, in the cabin by uh, using the rituals products uh, um, in the showers or having some activations um, with some leaflets uh, to really uh, bring them to the store. So I think that's something that we could do as well. I think we also should think differently in terms of where where is all the entertainment taking place on board of the cruise ship? And can we not bring the retail to that place? So let's say a pop-up location um, in, in some other region or some other places on the board of a cruise ship. I think that's something that we also need to look into. And Suzanne, from a cruise line and from a retailer point of view, how does that work from your point of view of the use of space and putting brands and retailtainment into different spaces and integrating it with other entertainments within the... Yeah, Great. well, I suppose the first thing is that things need to be super, super easy. So they need to be easy to implement, easy to understand, and also easy for the guests to understand. Um, so that's that's the first thing. I was just uh, really enjoying the Seconda out there at the moment. They've got a really amazing display cabinet. And I think making things really, really simple helps because if you've got a, a simple and flexible um, implementation activation, then you can move it quite easily around the ship. As Adrian mentioned yesterday, though, it's it's all about that flow of the guest. So finding those spaces around the ship is 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 a challenge. It's not impossible, but I think you have to make sure that you're um, taking into consideration the flow of the of the cruise itself and when passengers are going to be coming out of theatres and when they're eating and all of those things need to be taken into consideration. But um, but yeah, I think I think it's definitely doable, and I think that. 
actually when you speak to people about the obvious, like can we have pop up on the poolside or can we do something outside the spa or can we do something as the theatre is, you know, is coming out. I think it, there are definitely opportunities there. It's just about bringing the main stakeholders to the table all at the same time and communicating. And you touched there on the need for sort of specific things that are specific to the route and to what's being offered on that cruise. And Amy, you, you mentioned the importance of having things that can be repeated and can be extended easily. But what are the key considerations for you guys in your cruise business when it comes to choosing what brands and what experiences you put on specific routes? Because we've heard talk about the fact that it's not a one-size-fits-all market, nothing about this is. So how do you, what sort of drives those decisions for you? Uh, that that's a great question and when we talk about the differences in, in retail attainment and then also how we customize the destination and demographic uh, there's two elements to this uh, a big one is staffing uh, I, and I give so much credit to the onboard staff because they uh, every cruise every day are able to learn shoppers' names, have them coming back, provide recommendations. Uh, it, it's such a powerful source. And so as uh, to that point, if we're talking about activating outside of the shops, that staff member or those staff members have to be participating in that. So you need the right people at the right time to promote those products. And uh, that also takes staff hours of the shops. And so coming from the retail background, it's so important to know that staff, ha they can't be everywhere at once. And so it really, when you are retail uh, activation um, with, with brands, it has to be so meaningful and it has to be so impactful because otherwise it's just gonna be a lot of fluff, a lot of confusing messaging, uh, as you said. Uh, one element with Diageo that we just concluded is the uh, the cruise uh, segmentation for retail. And so this looks at the home port of cruise ships, different cruise lines, the, the length of voyage, the age of the ship. And taking in all of this criteria has allowed us to tier out uh, 150 plus cruise ships that are sailing within global travel. So this allows uh, Diageo to create custom formats for activation. Uh, House of Walker is a great example of this because we have, uh, everyone is probably very familiar with the Johnny Walker tastings on board cruise ships. And so we're bringing this up now to, uh, to today's tastes, uh, focusing on travel exclusives. And so we know that it's not a one size fits all. You have beautiful flagships that are, are new, that are innovative, and they have uh, maybe better opportunities for visibility. Uh, but the bulk of the revenue is coming from these tier two, tier three ships. So that's where the core uh, programs are, and you want to make sure that anything that you're uh, launching on board is going to be able to tailor to the Tier 3, the Tier 2, uh, Tier 1, and flagships, and uh, with minimal intervention from the brands, because the staff need to be able to execute, uh, cruise in and cruise out. And Suzanne, I can see you nodding away there. It's, it's an interesting point, isn't it, that how do you guys go about choosing what brands and what activations you want on specific routes? And how do you go about sort of, and what can be the logistical issues sometimes in making that happen? Yeah, obviously it would be much easier if the ships weren't moving. So you've got the physical and logistical constraints of getting that uh, activation on board. Um, and then not only um, getting it out and displaying it easily, but then how you store it. That's a, that's a really big issue. But it, once again, it comes back down to that training. And can we get the staff and the teams on board to really understand what they're activating so that once the brand has left, you guys have left, that they can still carry on and and execute that when you're not there. But that, and that ability to build those relationships can't, can't be underestimated, as you said. That's, that's what they're there for. They're really there to build those relationships with the guests, but we need to give them the information in order to activate properly. So I think that's a, yeah, that's a big thing. And, and we talked a lot about it yesterday, about how we get that training to continue yeah. with the staff turnover that we have and using the digital ass assets if we can. Yeah. And, and are there specific things you look at from your brand partners for specific routes? Or do, do you sort of choose a couple of retail attainment things that would be particularly tailored and then tailor the rest of the offer in a different way? Yeah, we do try to be really specific to the destination and to, to, to the itinerary and to the demographic. So that's absolutely what we do and where the category are performing better in some areas than they would in others, that we really try and focus on those brand partners. Uh, and then, honestly, it's really about the brands. It's about the partnerships. It's those that really support us and, and come with the data and come with the information 
tell us what's happening in their market as well um, to help us make the right decisions about the, the assortment and, and the way we activate. That's really, really important. And Lottie, for you guys, what are the sort of key considerations you put in when working out which sort of retail attainment and which things will work on which cruises? How do you... Yeah, well, the Rituals collections are designed actually for all backgrounds. So um, we have a core collection, which is um, yeah, affordable luxury for a very good price. Um, so obviously, with our 1,400 standalone stores across the world, we have a lot of data and we know exactly which collection suits which which passenger so we can adapt and, and adjust based on that um, however I think it's 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 key and there also the collaboration is to have those core collections um, and 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 but more of that it's it's how do you bring those collections across and yeah that's again the training part so that's and Looking more widely at the cruise experience, and I know this is something that's been touched on briefly um, yesterday, and, and Suzanne, I'll, I'll come to you first on this. How can you go about integrating retail with the wider experience, with the bars, with the entertainment? What do you think are the opportunities there? And also the, the key challenges from your point of view that you need help from partners or that you guys need to work together to be able to address? Yeah, I think, I think the Lego... Um uh, example that I gave earlier was a really interesting one. We went as a team, so we went with um, the category manager, but also the head of kids entertainment, the head of strategic partnerships, and we went to Lego, not only to see what they were doing in their markets as well, and the new innovative things that they were doing. It helped the team that we took there to see the the, the bigger picture and to see what was further down the, the, the road in terms of new builds and new ships that are coming on board. How can we properly integrate brand partnerships at the decision-making stage of, uh, of the ship. So I think, if once again, it's about communicating and having all of those stakeholders around the table at the same time and, and really taking the insights from the brand as well and, and, and getting the teams, the, the, the teams on board the cruise ship, the, you know, the, the headquarters team, getting really excited about what the brands can bring and that they see is really part of the guest experience. It's yeah. not just, as I said before, it's not just a transaction, it's not just a product on a shelf. It's about the whole experience that the brand can bring. And Amy, from a spirits point of view, that wider experience across the cruise is a big part. We hear a lot of talk about sort of bar experiences and, and like how do you tie that into retail attainment and what do you think are possibly the opportunities to develop that within the cruise mm -hmm. sector? The spirits category is, I would say, very natural when it comes to an omni-channel approach because the bars are such a popular destination on the ships. And so... Uh, I would say that the motivation from the brands and the retailers exist to, to bridge that gap. Uh, the cruise lines themselves and, and the beverage teams, they are the ones that really need to have that conversation because you have the consumers who are engaging at the bars, they're um, exploring new products, and you need that, that bar staff to be the one that says, this product's available tax and duty free in the retail shops. I mean, it's such a simple message and that's all they have to do. The retail staff will do the rest. It's a matter of just getting the consumer into the shop and converting them into shoppers. Uh, a, a great extension of that would be uh, Don Julio Tequila, an amazing, beautiful brand on board. So a consumer will try it in the, the bars and then they'll go to the shops where in on select ships they can actually have a customized uh, product uh, with a purchase and so instead of Don Julio it might say Donna Latte you know it's, it's a, a great opportunity to uh, customize the product yeah. in a meaningful way that allows the consumer to extend their cruise vacation at home so it starts with the the bars and in the, the cruise lines to make sure that that bridge is gapped and is that omnichannel approach something you I see in the wellness sector as well and yeah absolutely I, I mean rituals and bars that's I think not really <laughs> something that uh, that uh, suits our values however uh, we do see like product placements in the VIP lounges uh, you also mentioned like the spa using rituals products in the spa but also in the cabins to have the amenities definitely I think this is really something that also helps to drive uh, the traffic into the stores in the retail and it, it all comes back again, I suppose, to that collaboration and that ability to be talking from an early stage yeah. to work out what those opportunities are. Absolutely. Um, I will, if any of you do have questions for our panelists, please do remember you can submit them through the Slido app, which is accessible through the QR code in your, uh, in your 
brochure. Um, Matteo, I want to come back to you very quickly on looking beyond cruise. Because obviously there are so many opportunities for retail attainment generally. What do you think could be learned from the wider the domestic or the wider travel retail market that you'd like to see possibly brought to life within cruise or that you think would have potential there? Yeah, we think that there are mainly three point of view where we see this kind of opportunity. One, it's uh, following uh, all the trend, the green trend, the sustainability trend. Many different brands have been launching on the market, uh, different uh, sustainable collection, and they're expanding uh, progressively even more. So to surf uh, this kind of trend uh, could help uh, taking from domestic into cruise uh, the same experience. Uh, second one, it's uh, still omnichannel. Uh, when uh, creating a similar experience between uh, online and offline, people are browsing before uh, uh, the departure as well after the, the, the arrival or during the cruise for having very personalized service playing uh, uh, to brand. Uh, the third one, it's uh, what we mentioned even before, it's taking uh, some experiential retailing uh, experience inside of, uh, of a cruise. Uh, if you imagine, for example, uh, during a journey, a specific journey, so the cruise, we can find tons of that. Uh, and uh, you create uh, like teams uh, around the experience. Uh, you can mainly customize the experience uh, for, um, for the guest on board. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, having more than 100 brands uh, and uh, out of those 20 are uh, lini brands in uh, in sunglasses we can play a lot uh, starting from sport uh, lifestyle luxury and uh, we can link uh, all these points together to deliver great experience to customer and suzanne do you do you have experiences you'd love to see brought to life on one of your ships that or the types of experiences that you think could flourish within cruise and what are the challenges i think in bringing in something new like that yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I think um, you talked about spa, but we're already talking to, to our, once again, that's in house as well, our spa. So, how can we really drive the traffic between the spa and the uh, and the shop? Because the, the, that's the other opportunity that we haven't spoken about. How do you actually drive somebody from the bar to the? It's a, once again, it's about training, but it's a, it's a very simple activation that you can have to say. You've tried it in the bar, now go and, and now go and buy it. But also it's the same with, this, with, with the spa. You know, why can't we have small activations in the shop that then signpost people down to the spa? Um, photo, photography as well, photo opportunities, particularly down in China at the moment, that's a really big opportunity. Photo walls within the, within the shops. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then the pop-up the pop up idea is obviously a really exciting as well. So it's about getting the right format that can move and can be flexible. So you've, you've found a great activation, but you haven't found the spot yet. So is it flexible enough to move and make it work wherever it could sit? And as, I mean, as, as you put it there, why do you think more of this doesn't happen within the market already? What, what's, what are the, the key obstacles? Yeah, I mean, we've talked about them before. Logistics is it, yeah. is a big one. Time is a, it is a really big one. Uh, Adrian talked about it. They've got so many other things to think about that you've really got to make it really simple and really obvious about where it's got to be. And yeah, and it's about bringing it to the table to sort of higher up in the in the cruise line to say, right, this is really important. We need this on the agenda because it's really going to drive guest experience. So, where are those spots that we could put, even if they're flexible? But where can they be around the ship that we can activate as and when the flow is right and the time is right to do it? So, yeah, I think there's a bit of internal work to be done with, within the cruise line to make sure that we prioritize that. But then it's also about um, making it really simple uh, to communicate and implement. Yeah. And with that in mind, Amy, what would you like to see coming in? Or what do you think could do well within the cruise market that possibly hasn't? come in yet um, and how, how do you think it can be developed further? Mm -hmm. I, I think there's a lot of uh, elements of education that from GT and from crew specifically that needs to be communicated back to the brands. And so if the brands understand the footprint, 
that they're working with, they can modify their vision and they can come up with solutions that will work in a retail space. So coming outside of the retail shops is, is of course, uh, I would say key. Um, seeing more brand immersive experiences is also uh, something that we should see more of. Uh, but again, it has to be flexible. Uh, it has to be something that's able to be rotated because you have a cruiser who maybe goes once a year on a voyage or in, in Carnival's case, up to six times. So you need to keep the offers fresh. And so having flexible selling formats and, and we can see how uh, different substrates and different digital elements can assist in that. Mm -hmm. uh, but having the brand immersion is, is key and something we should see more of. And uh, Lossie, we're starting with you. How, how do you find that balance, do you think? Because we, we're talking a lot about wanting the retail entertainment spaces, the entertainment spaces. But obviously there is, you, you guys are there to build brand equity but also sell products. Where do you think that line is between... Uh, experience and selling when it comes to retail attainment? Yeah, well, obviously the objective is to, to sell your products. Um, however, without retail attainment, I think you can't sell the products. I mean, if the products are just there on shelf, nothing will happen, of course, if people know the brand. But I think there it comes really on the interaction, um, yeah, the brand knowledge uh, from, the, from the teams on board um, to be able to also advise the customers on the, certain, on the different products. Um, so I think... Yeah, we from a brand can definitely um, bring more uh, storytelling and, and a product knowledge towards the team so that they are able to sell the brand. And I think there, yeah, there is a balance of retail attainment uh, versus sales, um, but without retail attainment, you can't sell. Susanna, I presume for you guys, this, this is a, an interesting one. What, how does that work for you for what you look for from brand partners? Yeah, I mean, I think it's that understanding as well that it's um, you've got the, that dwell time, so you've got the time to really build relationships, and building relationships is really key. And if you build that relationship with the guest, and uh, and I think we we heard from the data that people are going to come in three times, so you don't have to have a hard sell. You know, you can build that relationship. You know that person's going to come back. Give them a reason to come back. Come back tomorrow. There's going to be X and Y, and I think you can build that in to just great guest experience really, making sure that somebody knows their name, yeah. knows what they're doing, did you enjoy the show, come back tomorrow. So it's about building, yeah, building that relationship and then the sales will naturally come out of that, yeah. I think. And Amy, how does that work for you guys in practice? From, we've, we've touched on the challenges of being across bars and in stores, and, but where do you find that sweet spot for sales against experience with your brands? Well, entertainment always has to come, entertainment education has to come before the sell. And so we know that entertainment is, is a key part uh, of selling on board and, and bringing that message. I would say that um, ensuring that the message is succinct and, and easy to understand is going to be great for everybody when you're looking at uh, multinational and, and various languages and, and making sure that the message is clear. So entertaining um, to, to bring that message capitalizing on digital, um, utilizing the, the cruise apps and, and ensuring that the consumer leaves with having learned something new and having taking home a memorable uh, product is, yeah. is going to be key in, in bridging all of that. And Matteo, how do you address that balance between teaching people about these new products, giving them the experience of it, but also actually delivering the sales that you obviously want and need and expect? I mean, the, the, the ultimate goal uh, is and uh, will remain the same, that it's uh, hopefully to sell more on board. Uh, this brings me to the consideration that retail attainment uh, is uh, a tool to engage consumers that uh, most likely are carrying the brand or uh, they were not passing by the shop, so you have a tool to engage them inside. It really differentiates brand to brand, uh, so when it comes to luxury brand, as we have it in our portfolio very massively, it's more on the caring of the experience of the service that you provide to the consumer. It's like you enter in a high-end boutique and you should keep that standard very, very high. Mm -hmm. On the other side, obviously, we keep the standard very high for all our brands, but it's a different uh, uh, balance between uh, the sales and the experience uh, we deliver in the same spot. Then, without forgetting that people are passing by and come back uh, most likely in the shop and take uh, not that product that has been showcased during entertainment, uh, but uh, it might be another one, so we reach even the same goal. Yeah. And 
Lost here, if I can come to you, what, what do you think are the key touch points when it comes to engaging consumers um, across the cruise line? Across the cruise line, I think it's already started by pre-boarding. I mean, uh, giving all the information, uh, what is available on board. Um, I think that's the first start, starting point. And then having had digitalization to bring messages across um, and, and creating that... Um, well, every time again that okay, there is a, there is a store. I need to go there, um, and you need to you need to trigger them basically. And I think that's something that we as a brand, but other brands can do as well, is to see okay, what are the opportunities in the cruise outside of the retail stores? Um, and I think there are plenty of opportunities um, for for brands to uh, to explore. And Amy, from a spirit specific point of view, how how do you go about creating and maximizing those touch points in a cruise environment? <coughs> I mean, the bars are a great place to start, uh, absolutely, but we, we do know that there is a, a number of consumers that come on board and their drinking habits don't necessarily change from where, when they're at home. However, when it comes to retail, they are very interested in purchasing something they cannot get back at home. So the digital um, elements outside of the shops to communicate the message of new offers uh, is key. And seeing that message a couple different ways in a couple different um, spaces is going to really communicate to the consumer. Uh, because I would say the, the U.S. demographic is, is just not as familiar with, uh, with duty-free tax shopping as other regions in the world. So the education element is key, and it starts with, uh, as Lati said, it starts before the cruise. And so as much retail offers as we can communicate and even convert. I mean, spirits is a, is a natural... Uh, category to promote pre-cruise because you're already on board. You can't take the product out of the shop with you. It's delivered to your uh, crew cabin at the end of the cruise or you pick it up. And so um, having that category available for pre-sale uh, is a fantastic win for everybody because then the consumers already made that purchase. Uh, so the likelihood of them purchasing more once on board is very likely. And uh, it allows that, fr it, it removes that friction that I would say comes with a, a lot of times con converting the consumer on board. So that's, uh, that's a direction we'd love to see. And I am conscious that we are tight on time, but finally, I just wanted to pick from each of you briefly, how do you think and possibly hope retail attainment in cruise will develop over the coming years? And Matteo, will come to you first. I think very easily in the short term, linking brand to event and activity on board. We use the same infrastructure. Then we can build into that uh, more personalized and immersive experience playing uh, through sunglasses. We like it that on board, uh, you always has the sun. So sunglasses, uh, part of the ingredient of the cruise, as well more going more further in the funnel with the technological enhancement, show the connectivity follow this trend, as well as the sustainability in eco product uh, will gain more and more importance. So you sh we, we should start thinking about uh, more carefully. Brilliant. And Suzanne, from your point of view, how do you see retail attainment developing? Yeah, I definitely think it's all down to partnering with other parts of the of the ship. I really, th it's a, we see them all as very separate and we kind of work in silos a bit. But I think the minute that we start seeing that the, from the guest experience, which is that they don't see them as different, they're just, they're, they're on holiday, they're in, a, they're, in, they're in a massive floating hotel, and actually they just don't see them as separate, so we shouldn't either. Yeah. So how do we start working better with the bars and the spa and the casino, all of those things? I think if we can, if we can crack that, it's going to be a great guest experience. Amazing. Amy, that... Nodding away. You said. It's so well said. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I would say as well that I, I, what I really look forward to seeing in the future is how the cruise apps are evolving. I mean, we heard from from Princess earlier, and it sounds like there's some really exciting things on the horizon. So that is something that uh, is is super. Um, I mentioned it before, just having uh, dynamic offers that are custom to the consumer, I think is just so important. And uh, as well, looking at, you know, outside of the box uh, geofencing, as you look at the home ports and you look at the, uh, even just bobbing around in the Caribbean, having custom retail offers uh, that's accessible to the consumer so that they're aware of the products on board is uh, a very exciting prospect. And Lotte, finally from you, how, how do you see it? Developing. Well, I think we all have one goal, and that's to have more retailtainment on board. So I think let's start the conversation and afterwards the collaboration, because I think there is so much potential. Amazing. 
Thank you very much indeed for um, all of you for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking, um, thanking my panellists here. I think we're going to move forward to the obligatory photo. Oh, yeah. I'll come in front of the tables. <laughs> come around that way. And I suspect we'll then be asked to move that way. Yeah. This way or that way? Up to the left, please. Thank you very much. Okay. I will survive. <laughs>